Take 91. Andrew Sherman here. I'm trying to talk to you guys today about military spending. Unfortunately, I have um, opinions uh, on this subject which uh, excite emotions in me, which make it hard for me to talk in a, in a non-biased way, which I think is very important to do. So uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, outline the uh, party's policies with regards to military spending so that you guys can make an informed decision when you go to the polls on October 19th. So the conservative government, the conservative government supports the war in the Middle East 100%. We are going to, according to the conservatives, we're going to stand with our allies, some of our, some of our biggest trading partners and oldest friends uh, in the world uh, are going to war against the Islamic State, and uh, the conservatives want us to, to be there with them. Now, uh, ISIS is obviously uh, a, a huge um, threat to a, to a lot of things, and, uh, and the conservative government believes that the best way uh, to handle it is to uh, take the fight to them and, and hopefully resolve it quickly uh, in that way. So... Uh, aside from that, um, with regards to contracts and stuff like that that we've that we've done, um, we've we've sold a bunch of stuff to Saudi Arabia. We we're trying to buy some uh, we're we're trying to buy some jets, some fighter jets, uh, to to show that we have military presence that has that has jets. We're gonna spend a lot of money on that. Um, we wanna. Uh, conservative government wants to boost the primary reserves to, to 30,000 as well as expand Canada's uh, special forces by 35 percent. Uh, that's by uh, by 2019 and 2022. Uh, that's a huge increase in the number of, uh, of people that are that are employed with the military, uh, as well as establishing a Yukon, uh, a reserve unit in the Yukon. Uh, and this other thing, uh, I think it's called the Rangers, is kind of like a, a similar to a cadets thing, uh, which gets youth more involved in, in military training, uh, as well as employment. So it's employment for a lot of those people. Um, they're going to make this deal on these on these jets, and the jets are going to need some work, which is going to also um, provide uh, provide some work in the short term for a number of people uh, who do maintenance on planes. Uh, and that's the stance of the, the conservatives. The the liberals um, are really, really big on uh, pointing out that the conservatives uh, are getting ripped off on those jets as well as we've been ripped off on uh, on other things in the past by by the conservatives are having some trouble with procurement but i mean the liberals can't really point point fingers you know they they messed up some deals in the past too but at the same time uh somebody needs to point a finger so um yeah you know what <laughs> Uh, the Liberals will reject the F-35 deal, that's the, the, the deal for the fighter jets. Uh, uh, we'll lose some money on it, um, but they'll call it a wash, and, uh, and we won't um, spend billions and billions of dollars, we'll just lose a couple of billion dollars and whatever. Uh, they want to make shipbuilding a defense priority, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but the, uh, the flagship for the Canadian military just broke down. Uh, it couldn't go play with the other boats in the ocean on a on a drill. It needed to turn around. It's old. Our Navy's old. Everything's old. Remember those submarine ads in the back back in the day? Are those submarine? Oh, whatever. It's terrible. We're so bad at buying stuff. Like, I don't care who's in charge. They're bad at buying military equipment. We always get the shittiest stuff. And that's what uh, we look like we're going to do again. Anyway, uh, sorry, the Liberals are going to make shipbuilding a, a priority, which may be a, a good idea that will create some jobs, uh, especially over uh, in the maritime provinces. Uh, recommit to, to UN peacekeeping, so the pull out of the war, and, and recommit to, uh, to UN-designated peacekeeping missions. Uh, the NDP also on board with uh with that with uh, the pulling out of 
the war and, and committing to uh, to United Nations uh, peacekeeping missions. Uh, they're going to make sure that in a very generic sense um, that uh, the Canadian forces are, are equipped with all the stuff that they're going to need for the for the UN peacekeeping missions. Uh, and the other thing that uh, the NDP are, are going to do is uh, is take care of uh, the situation regarding veterans affairs. Sorry, I forgot to touch on that with uh, with the conservatives. The conservatives uh, say they want to contribute even more money to veterans affairs. Uh, but I do have uh, some red flags about about that because the conservatives actually have increased uh, spending on veterans affairs over the last few years is pretty pretty well every year it goes up we spend lots of money on veterans affairs but the the results are going down the 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 programs the things that are being offered the accessibility of these programs the the jobs in in the veterans affairs like all of the services are going down but the spending is going up what does that mean i don't i don't know what that means and i think that uh just to jump ahead the green party um are are thinking along the same lines as i am in that regard anyway back to the ndp the the ndp uh like i said they're going to pull out uh go back to un peacekeeping missions and make sure that everybody has what they have now the green party um obviously they're going to pull out of the war uh and go back to un peacekeeping missions uh, as well as uh i think that they want to prioritize uh natural disaster assistance and support as opposed to uh to military conflicts uh and uh what they they say uh and it's also kind of generic but i but i kind of like it as well more substantial oversight of defense spending so where is that money going there's a lot of money that just seems to be melting away. Um, and it's just weird. It's weird to me because the conservatives are supposed to be good at money and the conservatives are supposed to care about military, but they don't seem to be doing a very good job of spending money effectively on the military. And I think that that's really that's really frustrating uh to me i think that uh, a conservative government should be really good at that if like i mean they're gonna sacrifice everything else but it, conservatives are supposed to be cold-hearted bastards that are good at money and protecting the nation and they're just cold-hearted bastards is what it seems and I don't know if the other parties are going to do any better. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a whole lot of faith in them to do better. But right now, it's shit. Our situation is terrible. And we're going to waste millions and billions of dollars on buying more broken stuff. Like, you're trying to establish us in the world that that we're going to be a military player. And you're going to do that by buying broken things that just makes us a joke that makes us a joke. We're Canadians, we're peacekeepers. Let's do that really, really good. Let's make sure that the guys and gals that go to go defend the innocent people across the world have the, have the tools that they need to do so and we don't need to use jets to bomb people to keep the peace places. Sorry, there it is. Okay, so anyway, that's... Um, Conservatives taking the war to ISIS, uh, everybody else pulling out of that, uh, going back to UN peacekeeping missions. Uh, that's it. Uh, October 19th, make sure you go to the polls. Uh, vote for whoever you think is uh, is best capable. Uh, check out my website. Check out the McLean's Magazine, this or that app. Check out the, the CBC Vote Compass. These are all important tools to decide how you want to vote. And if you don't like your results or you don't know who to vote for, vote independent. Um, and if you live in Edmonton, Strathcona, vote for me, Andrew Sherman. Thank you so much.